What's up guys? You're probably like, whoa, Savannah, you're back. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. What's up guys? Today's video is kind of like a little tips video for a special test. This special test is called the Chesapeake test. And what it stands for is, let me tell you, the California High School Proficiency proficiency exam. So of course it's made or er, uh, hosted in California because it's a California high school test. And what it does is it actually allows you to drop out of high school. That is what most people use it for. Um, so they can drop out, go to community college and apply for jobs and stuff like that. For my purposes, I'm not dropping out of high school. For everyone who just thought I was, I'm not, I'm not dropping out of high school. I am actually going to use it for acting. You're like, Savannah, how can you use something for high school for acting? Well, actually, this test makes you legally 18 in the acting world, not like everything else, but legally 18 in the acting world, which means I'm actually cheaper for producers and directors to hire me, um, which means I won't need a teacher on set. I'm um, free of education, so I don't need a teacher on set. And also, I have um, no labor laws, which means I can work longer for them, so they don't have like a time limit from when I can work. And these and the directors will definitely pick legally 18 kids over 16 year olds because they're cheaper so they're like well actually I'll take you I don't have to spend as much money on you so they want you more which is really really good if you pass a test so there are three different sections you've got math English and an essay part yeah you have to write an essay with this one so to take this test you actually have to be 16 and a sophomore to be able to even take it. And so why don't we just get into some tips, like general tips about the test, and then we'll go into certain sections and what you can do. First tip, bring a watch. And I'm not talking about a smart watch or an Apple watch because obviously that's cheating. You can't have an Apple watch in there. A plain 1980s little watch. You need a watch. In the room, there are about like eight different clocks and they were all separate times. Yeah, they were clocks with different times on them. And they're like, let's pick that clock. I was like, how am I supposed to remember is that clock? And I can't even see it that far. It's like a whole 2,500 feet away. I'm like, dude, what time does that say? But no, I've got a little clock in front of me that I can go off of my little watch. I'm like, okay, I've got this much time and it's right in front of me, so it's a lot easier. Bring a watch. And the reason you need to bring a watch is because each section is not timed by itself. You have, a, you have three hours to complete this big test and you time yourself. And you have to make sure you have enough time for the essay, enough time for the math, and enough time for the reading. It's all you, so you gotta watch that time. So, studying is my next tip. You gotta study. Also, this book is what I used. I didn't do a tutor. Some people do tutors. Some people study books and just practice tests. I use this book and I'll give you the link in the description below for it. Um, but you can also do tutors and other things like that. Next, calculators. Yeah, we have to have a complete basic calculator. Just a plus, minus, subtract, and multiply. Yes, multiply. I was trying to remember off the top of my head. But, and it also can't be lifted. So the front of it can't be lifted because otherwise people can cheat off you. It's on the website. It'll tell you exactly what you need, but it has to be the most basic calculator from also 1980s. So maybe this is like a 1980s test. I don't even know. But it's got to be super, super basic. All right, tips. Now we're going to go a little bit more specific. Let's start with math. Okay, so make sure you bring your calculator, obviously. Um... Oh, the equations. You do not have to memorize them. I really wish someone told me this. My book didn't tell me this. No one told me this online or in any videos. You do not need to study the exact equations they come with the book. So when you get the test in the like before the math section, you'll get like the area of a circle, the area of a triangle, the area of a square, and it will give you all those equations. And also, it does not go to calculus. It only goes to geometry. It stops there. There is no calculus whatsoever in the test. Reading, that's our next um, little section. I really don't know how to tell you to study for this. It's kind of if you know it, you do. If you don't, oh well, because it's vocab. 
and you can't study the dictionary. And this book helped a little bit. I'd just say maybe do some like practice tests and see like how you do. Reading's not my strong suit. I'm more of a math person, so I did really well in the math. But just it's vocab and passages and all kinds of different things. And there's gonna be words you aren't gonna know on there. I'm not gonna like baby you. There's going to be words that you're like, I don't even, what? That just makes no sense. It's gonna happen, but maybe if you study some other words, I just, there's not really a way to study for the reading part. All right, the last part, the essay part. Yay, essays! It was awful. That's the worst part, obviously. Okay, so, I actually like studied and I looked online, I was like looking through videos, but no one told me their essay question. It was kind of really annoying. So I'm gonna tell you my essay question. I'm not gonna go into detail like my answers and stuff because you probably don't really care that much. So my essay question was, what is the hardest point of life? You've got childhood, adolescence, or adulthood. S pick a stance and stay with it. I, what I did was I, Pick the side and then wrote three different reasons of why I picked that side because you need five paragraphs. Five. Not four, not three. You will fail a section if you don't have five. You need an intro, three supporting details and some information with that, and a conclusion. I suggest doing like three to five sentences in each paragraph because you want to make sure they're nice and thick and has a lot of information. And then also, if you don't know a word, and, or you don't know how to spell a word, try and use a different word. That's what I did. If I was like kind of confused on how to spell difficult, obviously I know how to use, spell the word difficult, but you could say hard instead of difficult. Make sure you, you know what you're spelling and you know how to spell for that, because obviously it's, you're writing, it's like you're writing it out too. They give you a, I think it was like five pages, five to six pages you get to write on, and so you kind of have a lot of space. Don't take up all, or actually, if you, Get a lot of information, take up all that space, but that's my question. That was my question was, let me repeat it for you, because it's actually kind of important so you kind of see what it's, what it's based on, I guess. But my question was, what is the hardest point in life? Childhood, adolescence, or adulthood? So just so you know, that's not gonna be everyone's question. That is just my question. Each essay has or each exam has their own different question, like, should kids have a cell phone? Oh, I love 40 minutes, so I was you have to time yourself, of course, I've told you this. You have to time yourself. So I take about 40 minutes for my essay. It differs upon each person. Some people are quicker, some people are slower. So make sure you know your essay time. You're like, Savannah, I don't know how quick I write an essay. Well, that's your job. That's your new job. If you're going to take this test, I want you to time yourself to see how long it takes you to write an essay. Because then I wrote, I think, one or two. I wrote one essay to see how long it took me, and then I knew I needed 40 minutes to write my essay, about 40 minutes. So at the end, I was like, at this time, I'm stopping and writing my essay. Everything else has to be done. So I did have enough time because I timed it well. Oh, guys, just so you know, you have to pass all three sections to pass the exam. You have to pass the math, the reading, and the essay. If you don't pass the essay, you don't pass the exam. If you don't pass the math, you don't pass the exam. Okay? So you have to pass all three, but the good thing is, if you pass the math and the reading, and you have the essay, and you failed the essay, well, you still and can go back and take that again, but you don't have to take the math and the reading. So you can just take the essay part. And you get a full three hours, which kind of sucks because it depends on your place. I could leave once I was done, but I think it depends on where you take it. Um, so if you don't pass the math, or you don't pass the essay part, you gotta go back and take the essay, which kind of sucks because you have to take the whole thing again, but not the whole like, oh, there's a hummingbird. Sorry, there was, it was really, it was sitting right there as a hummingbird, not. How many words don't normally do that? Okay, either way, um, yeah, you kind of have to pass all three. And if you don't pass one, you can go back and retake that one section. Don't forget, I'm gonna put the link in the description below for this book, because it really helped me. So I think it could help you guys. I hope these tips help you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, also, if you have any other video requests, or if you need some other help with the Chesapeake, or if you have questions, go ahead and comment below. Um, but that's it, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, wait, wait, wait. Don't scroll the video yet. I have one more thing to say. It's really, really important. I have a new channel. <laughs> it's called Love the Savvy Life. Um, you guys should go and subscribe. It's kind of like a cool vlog channel and you can follow along with my life. I, well, that's kind of it. See you guys.